What's going on everybody? My name is E. Mackey and I am the creator and co-owner of Black Spades Playing Cards and today I'm here to teach you how to play spades. Now this tutorial is not going to be super in-depth, we're not going to go super duper into strategy and all that stuff, but I will be teaching you the basics of how to play so you can go to any picnic, family gathering, cookout, fish fry, and sit at the table and at least know what you're doing. As a black person, as a black American, spades is something that's very, very, very important to our culture. We all know that. If we eat in, if we get in together in a group, we're running a game of spades. And I recognize that, and I recognize the need for us to play spades with cards that look a little bit more like us, or represented us a little bit more. So in the design of our black spades playing cards, we got rid of the European deck of French of the French court, and our deck is featuring African kings and queens. We got King Tut, we got Queen Nefertiti, we got Nefertari, we got Akhenaten, we got the whole lineup. So first of all, we're playing spades with African kings and queens. Since spades is such a big part of our culture, there's no reason that everybody in our culture shouldn't know how to play. So what we did was design the deck in a way that if you don't know how to play, it helps you learn. And as we get through with this video, you'll kind of understand what I mean by that. So right now, the Black Space playing cards are actually in production at the manufacturer, so I don't have the physical deck right now. So what I have to do is superimpose our cards like as I do the tutorial so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about, but you'll be able to fully understand what's what and how everything works, you know, once we get into it. So with all that stuff out of the way, I'm about to get into how to play spades. So first of all, you need to be aware that there are several different ways to play spades and different people in different regions play different ways. But the most common way that people play spades is what's known as Joker, Joker, Deuce, Deuce, right? And black spades playing cards are designed specifically for Joker, Joker, Deuce, Deuce style of play of uh, spades. So before we even get started, the first thing you wanna do is take these two cards out of the deck. You wanna take out the two of hearts and the two of clubs. We don't need those for Joker, Joker, Deuce, Deuce, Spades, which I'm gonna refer to from now on as Black Spades. So in Black Spades, we don't use these cards. And just so you know, uh, for Black Spades, our playing cards, as you can see here, we make it easy for you to know which ones to take out of the deck, which cards to take out of the deck, as you can see right here, right? And in Spades, we call it Two's Deuces, right? So before anything, take these two cards out of the deck, right? And as you can see, our cards are marked, so you know which twos to take out of the deck in black spades, right? So now, so in spades, the suit of spades is more valuable than any other card, right? Which is why we call it spades. Spades, the face value of the cards are just inherently more valuable, right? But we'll get into that. The hierarchy of the cards works like this, and this is across any suit. You got the joker, which is lower than the queen, which is lower than the king, which is lower than the ace. So from left to right, we have the hierarchy of cards, which is lowest card here, highest card here. Then we have the two of spades, the two of diamonds, the little joker, and the big joker. Now, before I go any further, let's talk about this, right? So in the game of spades, these are the highest cards in the deck right here. Two of spades, two of diamonds, little joker, big joker. Now in space, a common argument is which joker is the big joker? Because commonly in spades or commonly in decks of cards, they give identical jokers, right? These are identical. So a lot of times we have to write on our joker to do something to symbolize which is the big joker or just getting arguments in the middle of the game. That's not gonna be the case with black spades, right? Because our jokers are going to be labeled. Right. So we'll know exactly what's the big joker, what's the little joker. Similarly, when you're trying to learn how to play, this hierarchy might get confusing to you. Right. So if spades is the highest suit, how come the spade, the two of spades is lower than the two of diamonds? I don't know why. That's just the rules. But in our deck, you'll easily see that the two of diamonds is high, two of spades is low. You'll easily see the little joker from the big joker. So it's easy to know what's the hierarchy. But in the game of spades, this two of two of spades, two of diamonds, 
Little Joker, Big Joker, biggest cards in the deck, biggest, most valuable cards in the deck in order of lowest to highest. So now, when it comes to gameplay, this is a game that's played with teams, obviously, right? So you have two teams of two. Um, partners sit across from each other. So if this is my seat right here, my partner sits right there in that seat, and our competitors sit there and there, right? When you play spades, you are going to shuffle, obviously. Ha, better than me. You're gonna shuffle better than me. First things first, you wanna make sure you get your cards shuffled up nicely. I'm just gonna do a real quick shuffle. I'm not the best shuffler in the world. So, you know, don't criticize my ish. And once you get it shuffled up, you wanna pass the cards to the right, the deck to the right, so the person to the right of the dealer can cut. So I'll pretend like I'm the person to the right because I'm here by myself and I just cut. Now after the cut, the dealer is going to start dealing with the person to the left, their left, right? And we're going to deal to everyone until we are out of cards. So since I'm here by myself, I'll just do it like this. You should, the dealer should end up on themselves, right? So now I'll move these cards out of the way because we don't need them for right now. So this is my hand, right? Very first thing I want to do is make sure that I have some spades in my hand. And if I don't have any spades in my hand, it is what's known as a miss deal. And we have to shuffle and redeal. And wouldn't you freaking know it, that's a miss deal, right? It's a miss deal because I don't have a single spade in my hand and that's a good way to get whooped. So, since that's a missed deal, what you would do in a situation or a scenario of a missed deal is you would get all the cards back up, reshuffle, then redeal. This missed deal has to be called at the beginning of the game when you're looking at your hands. Obviously, you don't want anybody else looking at your hand, but it just happened to be that I dealt a missed deal, and I'm glad, so I can tell y'all that. So, typically, you would take all the cards back, reshuffle, recut, and redeal in the scenario of a missed deal. But since this is, the this is a tutorial, I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna pick up a different hand to show you how to play. Uh, okay, this hand is decent. So I'll start with this hand right here. So the very first thing you wanna do when you get your hand is you wanna organize your hand, right? Don't take 10 years doing this. People are ready to play. So what I typically do is what I'll do is get all my spades first. And you wanna start organizing your hand by putting all your spades to the side. Now I said putting all your spades to the side and as you notice, there's a two of diamonds right there. That's because the two of diamonds is considered a spade, right? That is the reason why I have this two here. So as you're learning, one common misconception that people make when they're trying to learn how to play spades is that they play this two of diamonds, number one, as a small card, and it's not. This is a very big card, it's a powerful card, which is why on our deck, you can see there's a symbol on it. So this lets you know this is a special card. But also, not only is this a special powerful card, this two of diamonds is a spade. So if you play this when diamonds are played, you are doing what's called reneging, and you don't wanna do that, right? So at any rate, First things first, we're gonna organize, get all our spades out of the way. And what I like to do is get them in order by hierarchy, right? By, by weight, by which one is lowest to the highest. So I got my four, nine, queen, ace, two of, two of spades, two of diamonds, and joker. This is in order, hierarchy within like hierarchically or whatever, like lowest to highest, right? So now I got all my spades organized. And again, you wanna do this without everybody seeing. I'm just doing it for y'all so y'all can see how to organize. Next, what I'm gonna do is organize my other suits from lowest to highest. So I only have two hearts. I only have oh, three clubs. I got one diamond and the rest spades. Oh my lord. How many books y'all think this will win? Sheesh. This is, this is an excellent hand right here. So anyway, as you can see when I organized my hand, what I did was red, black, red, black. 
right? Red suit, black suit, red suit, black suit. And this just helps me be able to play faster because I can actually see what's happening, right? So now my fully organized hand looks like this. It's easy for me to see the hearts from the clubs, from the diamonds, from the spades, right? Now, this is how gameplay works. The very first person at the beginning of the game, the very first person to play a card is gonna be the person to the left, the very first person that got their card dealt to them, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll play, put these back. I'll go ahead and I'll play a card from this person as if they were playing. So, well, no, I don't wanna play that nine. Typically in spades, your first card that you wanna play if you can, if possible, as soon as possible is an ace. Because in spades, you have to play, everybody has to play the card that led, that leads, right? Right, the, the suit that leads. Right now, clubs are leading, which means that everybody on the deck in the game has to play a club, if they have a club. You have a higher likelihood of everyone having a club if you get rid of these aces first. And since the ace is the highest card in each suit, with the exception of spades, you wanna play an ace first. That's a good, strong play. Next person to go would be this person. So they would, you always wanna play for the win. So what they're gonna do is try to play their highest club if they, or their highest club usually, but since this is an ace, that ace is gonna win if I have clubs, so it doesn't matter. Since this person only has one club, they're going to play that club right there, right? This next person, this person's partner, this person's partner right here, they're going to play their club. And when they play their club, they're going to play the lowest club that they can play because they don't want to do what's called bumping heads, right? This person has already won that book. So this person doesn't want to try to win the book. They've already won it, right? So they just play their lowest spade, and what I'm gonna do, I mean their lowest club, and what I'm gonna do is play my lowest club. Now the winner of the book, whoever won the book, the team that wins the book, gets the book. And it's up to the team to decide who gets to keep them, right? So since this person won the book, I'm just gonna let this person keep the books, right? The person that wins a book, it's their turn to play again, right? So, that person just played the ace of clubs. Now, what they might wanna do is play a low diamond because they may think that their partner has a higher diamond over there. Now, this next person is gonna play their diamond. And since this team played, now my partner is gonna play for the win. They're gonna try to win that hand, right? So what they're going to do is play their highest diamond and hope that this person right here doesn't have the ace, right? Or hope that I have the ace of diamonds. So now my partner is currently winning this hand. This person is gonna come because they had the ace of diamonds and play this ace of diamonds. Now this person is currently winning the hand. So now that I know that my partner is not winning, my team is losing, I'm gonna do whatever I can to win this hand, which is nothing because I actually have one diamond. That's the only diamond that I have. Remember, this two of diamonds is not a diamond, it is a spade. Do not play that two of diamonds. This two of diamonds would win this hand because it's one of the highest cards in the deck, but the two of diamonds is not a diamond. It's not a diamond, it's a spade. And when you have black spade playing cards, you will know that because it's labeled, it's gold. And our whole suit of spades is gold on black spades playing cards. And you will see that it's high. So since it's the only diamond that I have, I have to play that and dang it, this team beat us again. So they take that book. Now this time, this person leaves the deck because they won the hand. So this time around, they're gonna say, okay, well, my partner played the ace of clubs, I'm gonna play the king of clubs, which is a pretty strong move right there. It's still relatively early in the game. So everybody should have clubs. So now I'm gonna play a club. I play this club, it's my lowest club because I already know my other club is a queen. 
So that king is going to beat that queen. So I don't want to put out that queen because it's still a relatively high card and I can use this queen to win later. I've already known that my queen won't beat this king. So I'm going to play my lowest club and hope my partner can pick it up on that end. So this hand over here, they they know that their partner has already won. Their partner has already won this hand. So they don't want to bump heads. So they're going to play their lowest club as well. Right. Because this jack could possibly win something. So I don't want to throw out my jack when we've already won. Well, when they've already won. So now my partner comes along and says, OK, I don't have any more clubs. As you can see, my partner is out of clubs. And now my partner can do what's called cutting. Cutting happens when uh, a suit is led on the deck and you don't have a card to play it. Right now, let's since since the other team played the king of clubs and the other team is currently winning, my partner is going to cut this deck. He's going to cut this um this this right here. My partner is going to cut it with their lowest spade. They can use the lowest spade because we don't want it. We don't need to use anything higher because the suit of spades is inherently higher than every other suit. So when you use a spade, that spade is going to be the highest. And it doesn't matter if that was an ace. It doesn't matter what that was. This this five of spades beats all of this. And my partner is playing the five of spades so that we can win this hand because they are currently winning the book. Right now, let's say that somewhere along the line, I was cutting and my card is currently winning when my partner recognizes that they don't have any clubs instead of cutting this book and bumping heads with me. What they're going to do is play off. And so when you play off is basically I don't have any cards of this suit. I'll play a different card of another suit. And no, it doesn't matter how hard how high your card is. If I played this ace of hearts. It's not going to beat this king because it's an ace. It has to be this suit. The only cards that can beat the suit that's on the deck that's not the same is a spade. So my partner could have chosen to play a four, but they would have won that book. So my partner is choosing to play this five of spades. So now we win, right? Now it's my partner's turn to play a card. My partner's probably going to play this ace of hearts because it's an ace. We're still relatively early in the game. Hearts haven't been played yet and everybody should have hearts. This person on this side is going to look. The only heart that they have that they can play is this king of hearts. They have to play that. And when I see that this person plays a king of hearts and this ace led, that tells me nobody in their right mind is going to throw away the king of hearts in the ace led. You already know that this is going to win. So if you played a card this high, that tells me they don't have any more hearts, which means next time around, they're going to be cutting hearts. But that's in the strategy and I won't talk about that. So now it's my turn to play a heart. I already know that my partner's winning. So I just play the lowest heart that I have. The person on this side is their turn. They're going to play a heart that they have. They've already recognized that they've lost. So they play their lowest heart. And basically, that is how you play spades. This whole thing continues and continues and continues on until the end of the game. In which case, if you play the game where you don't bid, whoever has the highest number of books wins, right? Typically, if your team has gotten seven books, you already won the game with the exception of a renege. Now, a renege happens when, let's say, let's go ahead and play another hand. So let's say my partner won. So my partner is going to play let's say the nine of hearts. Well, my partner's not going to play a heart because my partner knows that this person over here is cutting hearts. So my partner plays the four of diamonds, hoping that I have something over here to win. Right. And this next person over here says, oh, OK, four of diamonds. I got you, bro. Highest diamond because they want to win this book. They're playing for the win. Right. So now it's my turn. Right. Let's say let's say even though I don't have any diamonds in my hand. Right. Because remember, the two of diamonds is not a diamond. It's a spade. I don't have any diamonds in my hand. Right. I don't have any diamonds in my hand. But let's say that I did. 
let's say I had this diamond in my hand and I recognize that my diamond is lower than this queen. So when I play it, I will lose. Let's say that I cheat and pretend like I didn't have a diamond. And then I go ahead and I just play this four of spades. That's called a renege because if I have, if I have the suit in my hand available to play, I have to play it. If I don't play it and I play another suit, that's called a renege. And what happens is if the other team catches it and finds out and they call us out and we go back through the books and find out that, yes, I could have played a diamond and I didn't, then I have to give that other team three books of what we won. And typically, if you renege, you've lost the game because nobody can afford those three books unless you're bidding and somehow in the bid it worked out. But at any rate, that is how to play spades. A real quick rundown. Sorry, the video went a little bit long, but hopefully you know how to play now and hopefully you understand the value of black spades playing, playing cards and how they can help you learn if you don't know how to play. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below. If you have any comments, put them in the comments below. Go ahead and tell anybody that doesn't know how to play spades, go ahead and tag them to this video and be sure to follow Black Spades on social media so y'all can stay up to date on how to buy the cards, where to get the cards, and post any memes and anything like that because we'll share your funny memes and funny games and all that. So thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you can learn how to play spades.